All right. Good morning, everybody. This is uh, Todd Fabus with uh, Trade Press Media Group and FacilitiesNet.com with another FacilitiesNet.com podcast. With uh, with it swinging to springtime here, it's time to put the snowblowers back in the maintenance shed and uh, bring out the lawnmowers. And with that in mind, our guest is a very timely one, a repeat guest, might I add. So I'm very happy to have uh, Brent Dobson, Director of Government Accounts for the Grasshopper Company, back today to talk uh bringing out the lawnmowers and uh, how they can be helpful to maintenance managers. So Brent, uh, welcome back. Thank you. Good morning, Todd. How have we been? I'm good. I'm good. How's, how's the weather by you? It's actually pretty decent here. <laughs> it's actually, you know, here in Kansas, uh, where grasshopper mowers are made, it's actually pretty nice today, really. Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe you guys have probably had the, uh, the, the lawnmowers out for a lot longer than we have here in Wisconsin, but uh, <laughs> anyhow, but uh, well, glad to have you back. Thanks for thanks for joining me again. I really appreciate it. Yes, thanks uh, for the invitation. Yeah, I figured we'd uh, we'd jump in and and talk about the topic. So, you know, one thing that that I've noticed in in conversations with you know if it's our editors or talking with um, you know facilities managers, our attendees at the recently wrapped up NFMT show, um, it's kind of been an increase in in interest in zero turn mowers um, that kind of bubbled up in convos with with people talking about getting the mowers out. Um, for the property. So I was kind of curious to ask you, are, are all zero turn mowers kind of like adaptable to to different mowing conditions? Meaning, you know, there's you know, mulching, col uh, collection, side discharge, rear discharge, uh, all those things. It was kind of top of mind for me from combos. I was curious to get your take on that. Well, it's, yeah, it's a good question. I think that um, the actual answer is no, they're not all adaptable. Typically, uh, when mowers are purchased, they're usually side discharge mowers, um, whether you buy them from box stores or from dealerships. Um, but, you know, several of them you can add collection systems or mulching kits to, just depending on what the customer wants to do with the clippings. Like in, we're coming into spring right now, so sometimes people do a spring cleanup and they'll collect grass. Right. Um, and then they'll switch back over to side discharge. And really when you're talking about adapting to different mowing conditions, you've got all kinds of different grass um, and different ways people want to handle it. Some people absolutely want their lawns collected. Some want it mulched and, and then some, you know, don't mind just having it side discharge, which is probably your dominant. Um, I would say that, you know, one of the factors is that, um, it's not necessarily easy to convert, um, all mowers over, uh, some brands like grasshopper, um, uh, make this very easy. Uh, for example, um, a mulch kit, is isn't just a mulch kit for everybody some people put off a block off plate some people actually um like grasshopper have baffles that you bolt in and you change the blades and you put a block off plate because when you're mulching you actually want to close off each blade in its own chamber and you want to handle those clippings because you're trying to take ideally if you're doing it right you're only mowing a third of the grass off and you're trying to cut it um, so fine that it essentially disperses into the grass and you don't see it sitting on top. So you definitely don't want, you know, to get some mulch kit that's just a plate that closes off your, your discharge and then you've got grass left on top of your, your lawn. That's not what people are looking for. Um, and collection systems, uh, people vary on those. People vary from everything from a metal chute on the side to maybe a bagger to actually having a metal hopper. Um, here at Grasshopper, we have twin bag and triple bag and metal hoppers. We even have a, what's called a high lift that you can actually um, take a 15 cubic foot metal hopper and you can lift it six feet in the air and dump the grass in a trailer or the bed of a truck. So contractors really like that because you can mow properties, yeah. you know, disperse of that, haul it off. Um, but another sidebar to that is the in order to do that you have to put a back system so some kind of impeller system that when you throw the grass over to the right to the discharge opening that it's able to throw it up into the collection bin whether that's bag or or a metal bin and we we run off of a spindle driven so it's a belt driven system and what i like about the adaptability of it is is i can our customers can put a collection system on in the spring and maybe they just do one or two mowings, but then they can remove that vac without tools. They can actually do that by hand, take the vac off and go back to side discharging for the season and then put the vac back on and 
basically collect the grass in the fall if they want to for fall cleanups. Sure. So that's definitely an advantage to a customer that does a lot of things on their own. Um, and then you get kind of into um, rear discharge, which is kind of its own topic. It's really more of a, a dedicated application. So do you have with the rear discharge there, do you have recommendations for, for rear, if you're looking at rear discharge, cause you kind of mentioned it right there that it's its own topic. So yeah, I think that, <laughs> I mean, for sure. I think that people need to uh, definitely demonstrate a rear discharge. I mean, the, the concept is that the clippings come out the rear of the deck. So they're, they're not coming out the right discharge opening side that both sides of the deck are blocked off. Yeah. Um, and, and basically for, you know, not all rear discharges are created equal. You want to be sure that it's a dedicated rear discharge, meaning, like I said, it's not just a block off plate or a mulching kit. Most of them are three blade designs. Um, Grasshopper is a little unique because in our line, we actually have what's called a 4X um, cutting deck, which is actually a four blade design. See, when you're, when you're maneuvering with rear discharge, you have two blades running to the right and then you typically have one blade counter rotating in and that's what helps channel the grass to the rear well grasshoppers design uses a four blade system we have a fourth blade to the back and the unique four it's a four spindle design um, and basically what it allows us to do is evenly distribute loads of clippings and eliminates windrow while channeling material out the back and away from the operator and the engine uh, Rear discharge also helps you, you know, from a trimming because you can trim either side of the deck. So you'll find people that mow cemeteries, things of that nature that need to get in tight quarters. Yeah, they can do that easily with rear discharge. Um, we even at Grasshopper have what's called a speed trim. It's a roller that sticks out past the deck on each side about half an inch. So if you think about, oh, coming up against a concrete retaining wall or something, the roller yeah. will roll along that. And so you can trim close, but you don't damage the wall and you don't damage the deck, which is, you know, a key thing there. But definitely rear discharges should be demonstrated. Be sure they're going to work for the customer's application. It's going to give them the quality of cut that they want. Really your best forms of, you know, how you want a lawn to look or the higher higher qualities of cut are either going to be side discharge or collection. The um, something you said earlier, and a little bit earlier was that I think bears it's important enough to repeat where you said that you cut a the goal is to cut only a third of the grass yes and so <laughs> i feel like there's so much uh misinformation out there on you know like some people like to just like get it way too low because they don't you know what i mean and it just it's, it's so i always just think that bears repeating but that kind of leads me to another question of you know just like that like how do different mowing blades make a difference like how does that come into play because you know, that's, that's what's, that's what's, that's what it's doing, right? That's the, that's the blade yeah. and the cutting. So how does that factor in? Yeah. I mean, I mean, absolutely they do. Um, I, I think that the types of grass you're mowing play a role, um, your application. So and what I mean by that is you're going to use different blades for mulching, different blades for collection, different blades for side discharge. Yeah. Um, and, and essentially the different grass conditions and types of mowing applications can affect obviously, which mowing blade you can use. We actually have seven different types of mowing blades that we use for different applications. We have what's called a high lift for side discharging. We have a medium lift and a contour. Contour is more of a flat blade for collection. We have a high low for mulching. Um, there's even a blade um, referred to as a laser edge blade. They actually laser material on the back edge and it helps the blade maintain its edge so you don't have to sharpen it. Nice. Um, so like institutions, uh, you know, colleges, universities, um, uh, correctional sites, et cetera, that maybe are mowing in um, tough grass, tough conditions, but they don't really have time to sharpen their blades all the time. It makes a lot of sense just to run those. Um, but yeah, definitely your types of blade will help you with your different cutting condition conditions and, and how you move material out the deck. So how often do you recommend sharpening blades? Well, the definitely, you know, depending on, depends on your conditions. If it's dry, you're probably not going to need to do it as much. If it's wet and lush, um, I would say eight hours. And, and that seems, I'm sure to, if you have a homeowner listening, they're thinking, you know, some of them mow all season and don't sharpen their blades. 
Uh, good contractors will will basically change blades every eight hours or less okay. to maintain sharpness. Okay. All right. I got to make a mental note. I got to jot that one down for my own personal yeah. uh, personal use. Well, you know, one, one thing I usually I tell some people to look for is, you know, when you're looking at your yard and you see the top of the grass, you see it get um, almost like a little brown tip to it. Yeah. What that means is that the blade is actually just tearing the grass. It's not cutting it. Cutting so that, that's that's a sign that your blades are dull. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's a good tip. That's a very good tip for, for everybody on, you know, for facilities, maintenance managers and on a personal level too. What are the, uh, I mean, this is another one I'm always curious on. It's a time of the year where like people are, you know, the lots, your lawns or properties are, they come out of winter time, uh, particularly, I guess, in the Midwest where we are in, in all different shapes, you know, I mean, snow accumulation can do things, uh, you know, if the snow plow is pushing the big, um, you know, if you're, if your property happens to be the one where the snow plow pushes the big, all the snow onto it makes a big yeah. snow bank, your yard can come out in all these various kind of shapes and, and whatnot. So like, what are some kind of common things to check if you're experiencing an uneven cut? I mean, you kind of talked about that. So if you like, like, you know, I mean, a bumpy terrain is what I was getting at. That's obviously probably yeah. one. But, um, but, you know, just other things like that. I mean, you kind of had mentioned, you know, the, the, the you kind of led into this question, you probably ticked it off already, but like with the, the tip of the blade, but I was just kind of curious to expand on that, you know, just common things to check if you're experiencing an uneven cut. I think that, I think sometimes the first thing people look at is they're cutting blades, you know, is, is there something, are they, are they dull? Um, you know, maybe they've hit some rocks or they, you know, something of that nature, but truthfully, I think the first thing you should check is your tire pressure. Uh, people don't right. think about the fact that if your your tires have been sitting inside and yeah. Yeah. even driving them outside, just like your vehicle, your tire pressure will change once you drive for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, similar things with mowers. It's been sitting inside the garage once it starts driving the, the tires, you know, warm up a little bit. So if both tires have equal pressure, start from there. That way you know that the machine is balanced. Um, you want to be sure that your deck is level and people don't necessarily interpret that just right. They presume they want the deck perfectly level front to back. We actually uh, set our decks with the rear of the deck slightly higher. Okay. Uh, say, say roughly a quarter of an inch. Okay. Um, and that gives you a better pitch in terms of the grass coming in and the ability to lift the grass up. I think um, we, we have some, probably some unique things. We, we have what's called a, an anvil edge to our deck. Uh, it, there's a bit of a slope to it and it allows more time for the grass to be lifted up and cut. Okay. So, you know, we've definitely got a lot in, in design, but those are some things, obviously, you know, checking your blades for sharpness. Uh, one other thing that you might think about on a mowing deck is typically the spindles that run your blades are ran by a belt mm -hmm. and belts tend to wear you know, they over time. So it's good to check the tension of your belts and be sure they're still where they're supposed to be. And if they're not, then go ahead and tighten them up. Just like a, just like you say, you kind of hit on the head where it's in a lot of regards, just like your, your vehicle in that regard that the, the tire pressure and belts wearing out, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty similar, I suppose. Um, yeah. I mean, um, people don't realize that, you know, when, you know, when you're mowing, uh, just depends on what you're mowing. If you're mowing, uh, an acre or you're mowing, you know, five acres, there, there can be a variety of conditions that you run into, yeah. um, having your tire pressure, right. You know, your, your belts are tight and right. Your blades are sharp. You know, you're going to have a good experience. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I know Wade, I've probably taken up a, a lot of your time. You've really put some great info out there, I think for, uh, for those who are, who are going to listen and are listening to this because it's, Again, it's it couldn't be a more timely uh, conversation. I feel like with it's like you said, everyone's bringing the mowers out now, and um, so check the tire pressure. And I always enjoy talking with you because I'm kind of one of those classic people who who really enjoys mowing the lawn. <laughs> you know, it's I do, uh, too. I do too. a bit of solitude in my own life, I guess. But um, so thanks so much. Why don't before we, before we kind of uh, part ways, and uh, why don't you go ahead and plug the uh, you know where you can get more info on on, on the grass hopper company and maybe uh, even reach out and contact you or, or somebody if someone listening has some questions or wants some additional info about uh, about your products about your mowers yeah absolutely i mean probably the easiest way is go to grasshoppermower.com um from there you know we're on instagram and youtube and a lot of other social media sources but i'd go to the website and we've got everything there for you to see
Sure. Perfect. Well, okay. I hope everybody listening, I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the combo we had here with uh, Brent Dobson, director of government accounts for the grasshopper company. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did. Cause I always like to talk with Brent. Brent, I hope to have you on again. Uh, you know, maybe even sooner than around three than we waited for. Yeah. Round. Yeah. It sounds great, Todd. I appreciate it. Appreciate your time. So take care. Thank you.